Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and in this video, we're going to explore a hypothetical scenario where our spacecraft is actually going to run out of fuel right here, very close to this supermassive black hole in the middle of our galaxy, and is then going to start falling into the black hole. So let's find out what happens to its velocity to the actual spacecraft and obviously the astronauts on the spacecraft as well. We're going to simulate this using Space Engine, and we're going to create a new spacecraft right here at a distance of about 5 AU, 5 astronomical units, away from the center of the black hole. Now, this distance is actually equivalent to the distance of Jupiter to the Sun, or roughly so. And so, this is actually what this black hole looks like from this particular distance. If the black hole was in the middle of our solar system and you were on Jupiter, this is what you would see. You would also see this accretion disk right here, but even though it actually feels like it's not moving at all, the velocity of this disk is actually really high. Right there, very close to the black hole, it's about 30% of the speed of light. So let's begin by essentially doing two things. First, let's notice the time right now. It's about 7.48. The year is 2518, October 8th. But it's really the time that we want to see, 7.48. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to create this uh, very beautiful science vessel known as SS Science. And this is going to be our starship that accidentally ran out of fuel and is going to now fall into the black hole. Now, this is actually uh, slightly dimmed. As a matter of fact, I dimmed the lights here quite a lot because the black hole is very bright. And so we're going to reset the luminosity just so you can see what all of this looks like in real life. And um, what I'm going to do now is unpause the game just so you can see what happens to the spacecraft that is placed in this region. So here we go. Ready? And look at that. Within a few moments, it actually flies away from us at a very, very high speed. Its velocity is already 8 kilometers per second, 10 kilometers per second, and increasing quite dramatically. It's already actually quite far away from us. As a matter of fact, if you look at the actual acceleration the spacecraft is experiencing, it says that it's currently 950 meters per second square. That's about 100 times higher than it is on the surface of planet Earth, basically 100 G. Now, this doesn't mean that the spacecraft is going to start falling apart suddenly. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite. It's going to fall just fine because free fall means that everything in the spacecraft is experiencing the same gravitation, same acceleration. And this really only becomes a problem very close to the black hole when we may experience spaghettification. And so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it when we get closer to the black hole. But for now, there's really no problem. You won't even notice that you've fallen into the black hole. But you are already moving at a velocity that's close to about 20 kilometers per second. And as you can see, it's increasing by about 1 kilometers per second every second. Now, um, Within a few minutes, you're going to be moving faster than any spacecraft in the solar system. And because the maximum thrust of this spacecraft is about 3G, this can only go to about uh, 30 meters per second square, we're never going to be able to leave this black hole. No matter how hard we try, we're basically stuck here. There's no way for us to escape, even if we turn around and start blasting our engines. And so in that sense, the spacecraft is kind of doomed. And so let's actually just watch what happens to it and maybe advance time just a little bit so we can see how the speed increases. Uh, you can actually see the speed here and how the spacecraft gets closer and closer to the supermassive black hole. I also want to select the black hole so you can actually see the distance to it. It's currently still 5.14 AU. But as I accelerate time, you'll notice that this number starts decreasing quite fast because the speed of the falling object also increases with acceleration. It's right now at 508, 507, 506, 505 AU. Now, what about the speed of this craft? So it's been about two hours, just over two hours. And at this uh, point, our spaceship is moving close to about 10,000 kilometers per second. That's a ridiculously high speed. And every second here, it's going to increase higher and higher. But why is that? And that's because if you notice, if you look at the gravitational acceleration, it also started to increase. So the closer you get to the black hole, the more the actual gravitational acceleration starts increasing as well. And as you can see, it's increasing quite dramatically. It's already at 1.5 kilometers per second square, 150% higher than when we started. And so this is actually where the concept of spaghettification comes from. 
At some point, the acceleration of certain black holes can reach such a dramatic number that even every molecule inside this astronaut's body starts receiving different acceleration and at some point it becomes so strong that the molecules are ripped apart. Now for this particular black hole, for Sagittarius A star that you see right there, it's actually not going to happen until you're very very close to the singularity. So we're actually pretty safe until we reach the event horizon, the black part of the black hole, and we're going to be safe even after that. It only becomes a problem when you're really close to the singularity. So for the first few hours, you're actually not going to feel anything. But in reality though, because there is so much material moving really, really fast around this black hole, and because this is literally like solar material, this is like plasma that's super hot and moving very, very fast, this spacecraft is most likely just going to burn completely by the uh, accretion disk of this supermassive black hole. And that includes all of the people on board, because basically there is really no protection against material that's moving that fast. But anyway, let's ignore this for a second. Let's imagine that somehow the spacecraft found a way to fall safely into the black hole. And so this is what we're going to focus on. So here it is falling into the black hole. Its speed is increasing quite dramatically. Its acceleration is also increasing. The distance to the black hole is decreasing quite fast. And... We are now just a little bit farther away from this black hole than Earth is from the Sun, at a distance of 1.12 astronomical units. Now, this is actually where things start getting even more interesting, because as you can see from the stars around you, you'll actually start experiencing quite a dramatic uh, effects of relativity, the theory that Einstein proposed over 100 years ago. So first of all, things will start looking differently, the time um, will start moving differently, and things will actually start shrinking as well. But most importantly, because you're actually moving so fast, and the material around the black hole also moves fast, even a single collision with a single atom could potentially destroy the spacecraft. But that's not really what we're here for, we're going to assume that somehow the spacecraft survives. And also notice how even the light itself starts bending around this black hole and you'll actually start witnessing quite an unusual bending of light pretty much all over the place as you move closer and closer to it. And so now we're actually moving at real speed. This is basically one second per second. And even at this speed, you can see how the distance has already actually decreased quite dramatically. And that's because if you look at the craft, it's now moving at about 74,000 kilometers per second. That's basically one-fourth of the speed of light. That's really, really fast. And the gravitational acceleration is already 21 kilometers per second square. And looking at this black hole, you can also see something called the Z factor, and that's basically the redshift factor. And right now it's about 4%. 0.04, but it's going to increase quite dramatically and you're going to experience even more redshifting um, as you get closer and closer uh, to the black hole. You also get to see the tidal force, but because this tidal force is relatively low, it's basically zero followed by, I think it's eight zeros and then one five. Um, this kind of means that you're not going to get spaghettified and most of the spacecraft will not actually fall apart just yet. And by the way, the time right now is 4.23 p.m., which means that we've actually been traveling for only about 9 hours. But at this point, time also kind of starts not really making sense anymore because of the actual uh, effects from the relativity. But this is a topic for another video. So here we are, this is our spacecraft, and it's falling faster and faster. It's already moving at 91,000 kilometers per second. And the universe around us starts looking very, very differently. There's a lot of blue shifting in front of us, and there's a lot of red shifting behind us. But things on the side actually look kind of normal. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see how long it takes from this region of space, which is actually the distance of Venus to the Sun, to fall into the black hole and to essentially disappear behind the event horizon. So first of all, let's look at the time. It's 4.24 p.m. Now let's look at the distance to the black hole. And right now it's at a distance of about 0.71 AU minus the actual radius of the event horizon. So it's about 0.6 AU, which is 60% of a distance of Earth to the Sun or close to where Venus is. So now we just wait. And I think it's better if I actually decrease the luminosity again so you can actually see the black hole, see the event horizon, and also see the spacecraft as it approaches the black hole. Now we've already moved about 0.02 AU, 
And if you look really closely, if I stop the camera, you can see how the black hole is actually creeping toward us really, really slowly. Its distance is actually decreasing quite dramatically now, simply because the spacecraft has reached such a high velocity because of tremendously high gravitational field. And looking at the site here, you can even see the actual velocity as we pass the accretion disk that's below us. So this is uh, pretty much the third of the speed of light now. And interestingly, the gravitational acceleration has increased by close to about 60 times since we started the simulation. It's now at 60 kilometers per second square. That's close to about 8,000 times higher than it is on the surface of our planet. And so this is the last moments of the spacecraft. Uh, we have now traveled for about three more minutes since the, I checked the time last time. It's uh, 4.27 right now. And as you can imagine, the spacecraft does not have much left before it enters the event horizon. Now, scientists today don't still really know what happens after this. As a matter of fact, chances are we might never be able to answer this question. But what we can answer, however, is what happens right before you enter event horizon. And there's actually quite a lot of speculations, but in the next decade or so, we'll finally be able to not just see the actual black hole with a real picture, but we'll also be able to analyze some of the effects nearby stars experience as they pass close to the black hole. And that's because we are now actively studying the uh, black hole in the middle of our galaxy, and the recent studies actually found quite a lot of really interesting things. But you may want to check out some of the other videos that I made about Sagittarius A star to find out about this. Okay, so the distance is about 0.45 AU to the event horizon. We're now entering the area where things just look very, very differently. As a matter of fact, the uh, redshift here will be very dramatic, but I'm going to show it to you when we get even closer to the event horizon. And this here is approximate distance of Mercury to the Sun, uh, with the Sun being in the middle of this black hole. And here, uh, the velocity has now reached the point where it's basically 38% of the speed of light. It's even higher than it was before, and the gravitational acceleration is now close to 100 kilometers per second square. It just literally doubled since I last checked. Okay, so let's keep going. And so now we're about 0.2 AU away from the black hole. Our speed is about half the speed of light. We're moving exceptionally fast. And what's even more interesting is how the world around us starts looking as well. Let's take a look at the world by pausing this for a second. So first of all, right in front of us, it's going to be a tremendously large, tremendously massive and terrifying black nothingness. But around this nothingness, you'll see pretty much the rest of the universe that's behind the black hole. It's going to be warped around all of this and be very, very, very highly energetic, basically blue shifted. Everything is going to look much bluer than it should. And this effect will even become more dramatic as we enter the event horizon. And behind us, things will actually look a little bit more red than they should and they'll get red shifted. But for the most part, what this means to our spacecraft is that from behind it's not a problem, but from in front, all of the light that used to bombard us is now even more energetic. So for example, X-rays will turn into gamma rays, and gamma rays might become even more energetic, basically destroying all of the shields we have on our spacecraft, and thus, once again, possibly killing the crew. But we are imagining that this doesn't happen. We're going to imagine that the spacecraft enters the black hole. And so now, the time is currently 4.34, and it's about 10 minutes after I checked uh, where we were at the distance of Earth to the black hole. And we're now essentially, as you can see, entering the event horizon. Now, uh, because the light actually starts bending even more dramatically here, once you cross the event horizon, you will only be able to see in one single direction, only in front of you. As a matter of fact, even if you try turning your head or moving your body 90 degrees, you are not going to see anything different. All of the light is traveling in one direction, everything is one dimensional, and you're going to see what all of this looks like once we actually cross the event horizon. And so this event is going to occur any second now, and we're going to observe as it happens in real time. The speed right before we enter the horizon is going to be close to about 60 to maybe 70% the speed of light. And right around here, as soon as you see the curvature of the black hole change its shape, this is when we actually officially crossed the event horizon. So somewhere around here. All right, so that's it. We have now officially entered the event horizon, and there's definitely no returning now. Nobody knows what happens now, 
but we know that the world is going to look very different and everything is going to be very different. The world starts becoming very one-dimensional as you can see right here and no matter where I look, I literally see the same thing everywhere. And that's kind of terrifying. You have no choice but to look in one direction. And so that's essentially our entrance into the event horizon and now we've reached the point where the actual spaghettification is going to start occurring in a few seconds. But because all of this will take only a few seconds, this is actually in real time, you won't even feel anything. There you go, that's it, we reach Singularity, and by the time we reach Singularity, you don't even actually realize that everyone is simply gone. And the last thing that we all see before we perish is literally just a tiny spot of light that represents pretty much everything we saw in the universe, but as a tiny, tiny speck right in front of us. And that's really it. That's where your life and your spacecraft ends. At least according to our current understanding of how black holes behave and what may actually happen as you cross the event horizon. Until we learn more about this, we're going to assume that this is the reality. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who wants to learn about space through video games and simulations, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.